Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of All The Mods 6. How are you guys doing today? How's life? We have a lot of issues in our world, but do you know which one is more pressing? Enchantments. I want to do a lot of enchantments, but I never have enough experience levels. So today we're going to see which mob is going to drop the most experience. And if you want to know which mob it is, make sure to hit the wiki. It's actually the piglin brute. There you go. You don't have to watch the rest of the video. Do you happen to drop any spawn eggs? Probably not. Well, I wish making a video would have been that easy, but unfortunately it's not. I still have to cover 19 more minutes. So let's get cracking. Obviously, in order to make an experience farm, all we need is a spawner. But I was hoping that we can also have a nether base. And I thought we might as well try to start it by paying homage to the other mobs, which give us the most experience. And by paying homage, I just meant that we're going to have a small cage so that we can display them. The first one is going to be a blaze and we're going to name tag you so that you don't despawn. It's too dark. That's the problem. Actually, you're making a lot of noises, so you go in there for the moment. Yeah, this is much better. It needs more details, but for the moment, I think it's good enough. Yes, I was imagining something like this. So we do have a blaze inside the cage, which was supposed to be another fortress, and uh, I could have done a better job. We have a guardian inside the guardian temple, and don't judge me on the architecture. I'm not a designer. We do have an evoker in a woodland mansion and a ravenger in a village. I wanted to stick a villager inside, but uh, I don't think it's going to work out very well. Just in case you didn't know, blazes and guardians drop the same amount of experience, which is 10, evokers and ravengers drop 20. So these two guys drop the same amount of experience as the piglin brute. And the reason that I decided to go with the piglin brute is that this guy is too fat and he summons vexes. Anyhow, let me try to come up with a design for the room, then I'll be right back. It's still far far away from being finished, but at least we have something which resembles a base. And I think we should now start focusing on the function. I was saying that, then I remembered we have these respawn anchors. Do they look cool? They kind of do. Actually, when they're lit up, they look much nicer. If that is the case, we're just gonna have four of them. Anyhow, since we are in the nether, I was thinking maybe we should have a bartering station for the piglins. We don't need that much space because this is not vanilla, we don't have that much redstone, but um, maybe we put them over here? I'm thinking that we're going to have three piglins on this side and three on this side, so it will be a total of six. I think what we need is a hopper first, and I'm assuming we can just put the droppers over here so that they will not be visible. I also made a timer from RF tools, and I think they're going to barter every 60 ticks. So we're going to set it on 60. Of course, I could be wrong, but we can tweak this later on. When I was working on this area, I did manage to capture a few piglins. That's not the one. <laughs> this is the one. And we're going to use them. And of course, I did bring name tags so that they will not despawn. I don't know if they despawn or not. I never thought that I'm going to do this in modded, so I was never prepared. So let's try this manually. Will you pick up the gold? No, of course not. Yes, that is much better. So obviously, this is not 60 ticks. It's not 60 ticks, it's 6 seconds, 120 ticks, and they do give you a ton of garbage, look! <laughs> I mean quartz is something that I need, glowstone is something that I need, ender pearls are always welcome, they also give us leather, crying obsidian, string, and even all the modium. We don't really need to have all the modium food, but it's food. Why waste it? One thing that I was really worried about was that the dropper is going to drop the gold and it's going to directly go inside the hopper. Thankfully, they're picking it up. Here is how we're going to do this. I'm going to put an export bus down here, like so, and we're going to tell it to export gold into an ender chest. And maybe some speed upgrades is not the worst decision, yes. And then we're going to extract the gold from the ender chest into the droppers, right? Yes. That is much better. And then for the items that they're going to provide us, we're going to have a logistical sorter, the ender chest which is hooked up to our ME system, and a trash can over here. The ender chest will be blue and you're going to be green. Okay. Of course, we're keeping the ender pearls, the nether quartz, the glowstone. We're going to set a filter for glowstone and it will go to blue. Am I correct? Yes, I was correct. Nether quartz is also blue and the ender pearls are also blue. Well, long story short, these are the items that I'm going to keep. The rest we are going to void. And I think the only enchanted book that they're going to provide us is soul speed. So we're going to void that one as well. We have one. That's enough. I copied the exact same design on the other side and now we have six piglins whom we are bartering with. One thing which had me surprised is that one hopper line 
doesn't seem to be enough so i'm actually using three because uh, you get a backlog of items i mean you do not get a backlog of items every single time but depending on what they drop sometimes netherrack or gravel then you might have some issues another very important issue which i was not thinking about is that we're burning through the gold and we don't have that much gold but thankfully environmental tech has been added to the mod pack and we should be able to get free ores which talking about environmental tech i think our quarry is offline Yes, exactly. It had already mined an area of 512 by 512, so I just need to set new coordinates. You are working, right? Yes. Anyways, our main goal of having a base in the nether was to have an experience farm, and so far, I haven't done that. Let's focus on that, I guess. What we want to make is an experience farm for brutes. The problem with these guys is that if we want to spawn them, we're going to need a spawn egg. So we need to kill like, I don't know, 100 of them in order to get a spawn egg, because the chances are very low. That doesn't sound very bad, but I think you only get like 4 or 5 of them per bastion. So what I have in mind is that we're going to take a blood sample using a syringe from RF tools. Oh, they do have a lot of health, that is good. And we're going to try and spawn them using an RF tool spawner. We need gold, netherrack, and some sort of a plant material. So for those of you who don't know, the way that an RF tool spawner works is that you're going to need a syringe with the mob that you want. Once you put it inside the spawner, it will tell you which material it's going to need. And then you need to provide those material to the spawner using matter beamers. So I am going to use some export buses over here and we need cables. Of course, this is going to be a very temporary setup. And once we get the spawn egg, I'm going to remove it. I'm going to use one of those matter beamers for for gold, one of them for netherrack, and four of them for wheat, which is going to be our organic material. The matter beamers are also going to require RF, so I did put a quantum entangle porter over here, and we also need to hook it up to our spawner. And this is the part that I always forget. Do I have to put you on focus mode or range mode? Let's try range mode. Oh, destination set. Okay, then it works. You might also notice that we're not getting any mobs. That is because these guys are going to require a redstone signal. Now it should work? Yes. It's getting the matter, and I just have to farm these guys, until we get an egg. That was super fast, I think I only killed like 10 of them and that's it. <laughs> nice! So I'm guessing we're done, we can just start making the farm. Here's how I think we're going to do this, we're going to drop them by at least a few blocks. It's not very important, but if they take a little bit of damage and lose a little bit of health, I'll be happy. I am going to upgrade the spawner to its maximum limit, so I think one thing that we absolutely have to do is to try and control it using redstone. I have an RF tool screen over here, this is the controller, and for the moment we just put the screen over there. So can you find it? Or is it too far? Really? It's that far? Can you find it now or you don't work at all? Aha, that is weird. Really weird. Dude, this is literally on you. Apparently in this version of Minecraft, it doesn't work. Which is perfectly fine by me, we can have a redstone transmitter and a redstone receiver and we just set them to channel 2. And if we put the spawner, give you a comparator, you should be off, right? Good. That does not connect. Maybe like this? No. Yes. Finally. For some reason it was not working and I was very confused. I forgot that I have not upgraded the spawner so it doesn't spawn anything. Unless I'm very close. And just to make sure that we are going to have all of them in a central position, maybe we should increase this by a few blocks. And I'm just going to cover this place with vector plates. That should be okay. I hope. Yeah, I'm thinking this should be good enough. Let's test it. Do we get all the zombies in the center? Yeah, it's fine. I forgot to mention that one of the main reasons that I decided to go with piglin brutes is that they don't have a child variant. So if we have slabs over here, they can't get out. We're also not going to go for an overkill. I did make 16 clocks. That should increase the speed. Also 16 sugar. Oh, that is the maximum spawning speed. Okay, that's not very good. <laughs> we give you one gas tier, one aldemodium, some spider eyes, and one nether star. So let us try this with zombies and see how many we're going to get. And will it crash my game? That is good. Relatively. We should turn it off. I think we're all set and we should be able to spawn brutes. That makes me very happy, and that is a lot of experience, look! We should probably turn it off. We have the mob farm, now we need knowledge of ages. So let us go back to our main base. Oh goody, night time. We need to brew the potion of ancient knowledge, and for that we need a bottle of enchanting. Okay, I just grabbed a few enchantment books, I don't even know if we need them or not, but it's okay. So if we do this once, we get the potion of ancient knowledge, and we can get... Ancient knowledge too? Hopefully? Yes, exactly. 
here is the charm and we just make you unbreakable. The way that a potion of ancient knowledge works is that it will convert all the loot into additional experience. And what I'm curious to see is that how much we're going to get now. Honestly speaking, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's really good. We just need to get rid of the loot. Cause I was thinking maybe it's going to convert everything into experience, but apparently not. I don't really care about the loot, so we're just gonna put some hoppers over here and we should be fine, right? Yeah, I would say this is much better. Let's try this one more time. I'm thinking that the potion of knowledge that we have over here and we're using it as a charm is a little bit different than the knowledge of ages, the enchantment that we can put on a sword. So this one seems to give us an experience boost and the other one seems to convert everything into experience. The problem is I did make a sword, where is it? Yes, I did make another sword with knowledge of ages 4 but when I wanted to use it on our mob farm it crashed my game. So. I can't really test it at this very moment. Maybe we are going to do that after the next update. Anyhow, the mod pack itself is in the process of getting a major update and since there are a lot of bugs, I do not think it's a very wise decision that we go generate new terrain, load new chunks and make new bases. And I think what we should do until the next update, which is going to fix all the bugs, is to finish our own base and get into the mods that we have neglected so far. And I think one of those mods that we have to get into as soon as possible is Ars Nouveau. Parlez-vous français? Yeah, me neither. When you start up the mod pack, it will give you only one book. And that book is called A Worn Notebook. And apparently that is the guide of learning French. Sorry, I meant Ars Nouveau. I have never been great at this mod, so let us do this together. Everything begins with a novice spell book, which has one of the most weird recipes. Why would you need tools? Anyway, here is a novice spell book. If you are a super crazy programmer, this is like Psy. If you are a magic person, this is like Tomcraft. What you have to do is that you right click and you can choose between different mediums like projectile and you can choose an effect like break. You give it a name and you create a spell and the spell is going to break items in a very weird way. What is the range on this guy? Not that far. Actually, it was that far. It broke it. Nice. And you should not break half slabs because now it's gone. I always call them half slabs. They're slabs. We are given a few basic spells, but those are not the ones that we are interested in. Oh, we can change the color? I was going to say that we are interested in far more complex spells. And the way that we unlock new spells is through a glyph press. Unfortunately, this block on its own is not going to function and it is going to require mana. You might notice that when I'm holding the spell book in my hand, we do have a little bit of mana, but this is personal mana and we need world mana. The world mana can be stored in mana jars and we can collect it using a mana condenser. If I have read the book correctly and if I remember everything correctly, Correctly, we just need to put the mana jar somewhere around here and if we put the mana condenser on top we should collect mana and it is going to collect that mana from plants that are being grown, animals being bred and mobs being killed. We do have a super crop farm over here so we're getting tons of mana. It's already full. So let us start with a very simple spell, Ignite. It sounds cool. We put a magic clay inside, a flint and steel and it should make it for us. I love the animation. It's really cool. So we just right click, okay. That was easy. And if I'm not wrong, we can make a projectile with ignite, right? We call it two. And obviously it's going to burn stuff. I was reading the book on how we can get more mana and how we can regenerate mana faster. And it seems there are a lot of ways. Of course, there are some amulets and pendants and belts that we can wear. There is also the armor, which depending on the tier will give us a mana boost. And also according to the book, adding glyphs to your spell book will also increase your maximum amount of mana and mana regeneration. This bonus also scales up with the tier of your spellbook. What that basically means is that we need a better spellbook. The apprentice one is super cheap. The archmage one is not that expensive. We already have everything. Yeah, so let me unlock a few glyphs and see how much mana we will have. One thing that I did not pay attention to was that depending on which type of spell that you want to unlock, you're going to need different types of clay. So you have the magic clay for very basic spells. Then you have the marvelous clay for tier two spells. And finally, you have the mythical clay for the ultimate ones. So for instance, if I want to make an augment called split, I'm going to need the mythical clay and apparently one stone cutter, which is weird. Oh, that consumes a lot of mana. Huh, did you give it to me or did you eat it? Oh, you gave it to me, okay. Do I have more mana or no? It's very hard to tell. Yeah, if you unlock a few glyphs, you actually get more mana. So I did make a few spells and they're really cool. <laughs> Let's try one together. Actually, can you get rid of him for me or no? Should I go down here? Maybe? 
Yeah, that is much better. Anyhow, we're going to make a projectile and then we're going to launch an entity and then we want to amplify it as much as possible. And of course, I'm going to try it on the spider. What will happen? Nice. He died. The issue is that it requires a lot of mana. Um, we don't have that much. But still, this is fun. I just made another crazy one for lightning. And let's see what this one does. Oh, nice. We have a charged creeper. And I was looking for this. Thank you. I think we should make some spells which are going to be useful. So we make something with touch and heal. And of course, we need to amplify it as much as possible. The issue is that I have to take a little bit of damage and I'm not taking any damage. Can you hit me a bit? Thank you. So how fast are you going to heal me? Oh, this should not have been on touch. This should have been on self. Yeah. So can you heal me now or no? Yes. It's actually much user friendly than the gauntlet from Tomcraft because if you make a mistake, you're not wasting a focus. You can just edit it. We probably should have something for light. How do you look? Oh, that looks nice. And I think I can also change the color. So this should be purple. Oh yeah. The question is, how do you remove it? Okay, we just have to punch it. Fine. Maybe I can also have one for haste. I can amplify it and increase the duration. That will give me speed 4 for 1 minute. I also made another one which is going to give me strength 5 for 1 minute. But still the vexes are the coolest. They're not very smart. That is the problem. They might not be incredibly smart, but if you have them in very large quantities, they just clear the way. And I can just walk. And I don't think having a projectile for these guys is very useful. I think it's just touch. But oh, they drop Inferium! <laughs> Anyhow, later on we're going to have a small base for this mod, so we need to think about... Did I punch you? If I punch one of them by accident, all of them will get aggro on him and kill him. Weird. I was going to say that we're going to have a small base for this mod, therefore we need to start thinking about mana because this situation is not going to work underground or in a structure. There is something called a mana bloom and I think we have to craft the seed. Where's the seed? Yes, here it is and in order to craft it, we need an enchanting apparatus, which is easy to make. And do you have something like a pedestal? Oh, okay, we do. We have 19,000 mana gem. I think our quarry has been super productive. Anyway, uh, this is going to be an infusion crafting. So you go over there and then we surround you with pedestals. I think everything in this mod looks awesome, except the book. I'm not a fan of the book, but let us see if we can make this. An arcane core must be placed beneath this block. Fine. That is one of the most beautiful blocks I have ever seen. Do you craft it on your own? Do I have to right click? No. Sneak right click? Yes. Wow. And everybody's like astral sorcery is cool. Look at this one. And we have our mana bloom seed. Can I plant you over here? Yes. And will you give me extra seeds or no? No, it doesn't seem that we get extra seeds. Making extra seeds is not going to be that difficult and these guys are a source of mana. Or at least that is what I think I read. It says it will provide additional mana to nearby mana condensers as they grow. Aha, uh -huh, so they still have to grow. Fine. I just noticed that we have a plague doctor stuck in the river. So there is something that we can do to him and summon the black death. I did manage to find two of these plague tomes and if we use it on the plague doctor, we should get the black death. I'm not sure. So let us try it. I'm hoping that in water, it's the ideal location. Yes, we do get him. I thought this is one time use. Of course, we also need to take a few samples just in case. What is that? I want you and you. And we have a syringe filled with you. Very good. And it does seem that I got the plague, but there is something which will remove the plague, right? Leeches. Yeah, it's gone. You're not going to summon anyone else? That's it? Yeah, I don't think he's going to summon anyone else, so we just get rid of him. It was a very painful death. I know. I was hoping just before we wrap up the episode, we might as well try to make the Archmage's robe. That should give us a mana discount or, I don't know, increase our mana. The book is talking about a bonus, but it does not say how much bonus it's going to give us. It does not really matter, we can make the highest tier one and see how it goes. So we need to make mana fiber from mana bloom, then we need to convert it into blaze fiber, and then we need to upgrade it into end fiber. And we can just craft the armor, okay. That was easy. The question is, how would I look like? It looks like pyjamas and we're not going to talk about it. And I'm not going to wear it. This is much better. Well, I do have an extra ring slot. 
we might as well try to make the greater ring of discount. Yeah, cause I'm guessing wearing a ring is less embarrassing than wearing pyjamas. This should be the recipe, right? Yes. The ring of lesser discount and we can upgrade it one more time. Cause it's not expensive anyways. Ring of greater discount. Can I wear you? Yes. I don't understand why do we have three ring slots, but it's okay. I'm not complaining. Yeah, it does seem to consume less mana. By how much, I have no idea. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.